What's up guys, it's Alice Productions here, and I'm bringing you a very different type of video, um, a tutorial type video, and I'm going to try to help you guys out, people who are new to fan editing, or maybe just editing in general. I'm going to try to make this different than most uh, tutorials I've seen um, by giving you guys as much information as I can in regards to that. Today we're going to be going over masking, just the simple masking of uh, putting somebody else in a different scene, something to that effect. Um, and of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, um, I will gladly make more or start making this a regular thing. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to try to not make this take too long. I'm using Sony Vegas today, and I want to show you guys you can solely use Sony Vegas when it comes to doing um, special effects. A lot of times, these uh, projects that other people make, they, it says it's Sony Vegas tutorial, then it says import this after you've rendered it in After Effects, or take this after you've made it in Maya. So today it's going to be completely Sony Vegas. So you're going to first go to your project media. I just have two clips in here that I've gotten uh, ready. One, um, one clip being uh, this little clip of Brandon Ruth, Ralph, however the heck you say his name. Um, and then the stock footage of the wilderness that I got online. So first thing you want to do is you want to click track two. And you can just click the delete key on your keyboard, and it'll delete it. Um, next, you want to uh, right-click um, anywhere on the track and click Insert Video Track. And as you can see, it has a short uh, key trick there as well. Um, drag this media up and drag this one below. And to match these up, it's pretty simple. You just kind of move your scroll your mouse up or down to stretch this area, and you can click right on the line there as you can see and click the S key for slice on your keyboard and now you can delete the rest of the stuff by just clicking it and hitting delete so now we got this lined up and we can start working on a mask of course this is going to be a simple mask I'm not going to take 50 years to make it perfect but I'm going to show you my tricks to uh, how I do masks when I am using Sony Vegas first thing you want to do is you want to right click the media and it says video event pan slash crop. That's what you're going to want to click. And it's going to open up to this window. And as you see here, if you go down to the bottom, it has position and then mask. So you want to click mask, and then you want to check mark this box. It says enable, check mark. And then you see this little bitty diamond down here. This is where you want to make sure your mouse is going to be at right at the beginning. Because, um, if you have other points on here, or if you start, say I didn't click that and my cursor was right here, this is where the mask is going to start. Um, it's basically a, a progress chart, so to speak. Whatever you do before, after, any of those points, not just for masking, for any effect inside of Sony Vegas, it'll be a progress in between. So if you have something red and, and then all the way at the very end it's green, it's going to change the color scale from red to green as you go along. But without going too in-depth into that, um, as we're in here, we will not need this uh, normal edit tool for a little bit, so you're going to go down to the anchor creation tool, click that, um, zoom in by just scrolling up and down on your media, uh, backwards and forth, how, how close you want to be. I usually get uh, a decent close closeness, I don't even know if that's a word right now, but we're going to use it. Um, actually, correction, I'm going to go back to the normal edit tool, just to click and drag, so we can start a good positioning right here on the shoulder. And now we'll go back to the anchor creation tool. But again, this is uh, this is all up to you on what you see. So you're just going to click and make these little dots. Um, I'm going to speed this up so you guys don't have to see me click dots. But the, the basis is that you're going to more or less connect the dots around the guy. Um, here we go. Let me just pipe in here real quick because I, um, if you have to move the area to go to a different spot so you're not like ending up really far away from the product as you're editing it, um, you can uh, click the normal edit tool and then drag where you want. Do not click the actual mask. Zoom in to where you want to be and then go back to the anchor creation tool and click your last point you've made right there. And then it'll go back to connecting all of your dots to finish your mask. And once I get about here, I just make a couple points down here, and then you have to make sure you connect them. So you see how it's highlighting the yellow color? 
once I, none of these other ones will get that highlight until it's finishing the box. More or less, you have to make it a circle. You could do that however you want, a circle, a box, whatever. It has to all connect in the end for the mask to work properly. So now it's connected, and I know you're saying, God, that looks like crap, because I agree. Um, but this is just a simple basis so you can see how your footage is looking. Now, something a lot of people do, which to me makes the masks look really awful, is right off the bat, right when they see this, they just click um, right here on feather type, out, and they just start clicking up. And that's just feathering the footage. And then eventually you get to this point where you feathered it out so much or so less, however you want to do it. And to some people, they say, yeah, okay, that looks cool, that looks good. But when you really start looking at it, you see these edges that are of the whatever background is behind him just coming through. Like up here, this awful brown color of the airplane from the real scene. And it just will, to me, make it not look natural whenever you're putting him or anyone into other scenes. So... What I usually do right now is I click back to the normal edit tool. Make sure you click outside the box when you're doing this. Because um, look, if you click here, oh no, I oh crap, screwed up my whole mask. But if you ever do mess up, all you gotta do is go to the edit tool up here, undo, and it brings it right back. So make sure you click outside here and then it gets rid of that box. And then you can scroll in a little closer, like this. And then you can start clicking your points and kind of making them a little more perfected um, of where you want them to be, not just the little rough run through. Um, what I usually do is I try to stay on the inside layer, as you can see right here by his ear, I'm trying to stay on the inside opposed to the outside. I, f I feel that um, the feathering out works a lot smoother than feathering in, uh, in almost every case I've ever used it in. Um, could be untrue, but that's just from my experience. Um, you just want so I just try to get the points um, as defined on the areas as I, as I can without going out of the lines. Kind of think of it as coloring a picture. Um, where you're trying to stay inside the lines, try not to make that teacher gripe at your parents. I don't know what I'm going with. Oops. There. Okay, so we're going to go through this. Again, still doesn't have to be 100% perfect because we are going to feather. We're just not going to solely rely on feathering, which is what I think a lot of people do, and it ruins their mask. And another thing with this footage today, since this is a basic tutorial, is I'm just showing you a very still clip overall, where opposed to a larger clip where someone's moving or the camera shaking, it can be a lot more time consuming, because you do have to go frame by frame when it comes to masking. So now we got here, and I know it still doesn't look perfect, right? So we're going to go back down to the anchor creation tool. Actually, my correction, sorry. You're going to right click any point on here and you're going to hit select all. That's going to select the entire mask. Now we can go to out. It's already selected out. And then feather type. I usually try to keep it under one. A lot of people go straight to the one to the two, like I was already talking about. So I usually will start off with a five and see how that, what kind of fade that gives us. And of course, if you're having the problem where it doesn't show up right away, all you have to do is click the little diamond down here and it's going to show whatever progress you've or click off of the box you've typed in. Um, might be able to get with get away with a 6 for this. And as you see, um, it gives it a lot more natural look to his body now on this background. So right here, I know the first thing you're, you're thinking is that it doesn't line up very well with this stock footage. And I know it's not going to look cinematically accurate because this is just some generic stock footage somebody filmed of some trees I got offline. Um, so thanks, random guy who filmed this, and sorry that I'm not crediting you. It's not anything personal. I just found this footage online. Thank you. Um, so we will go to the cookie cutter. I have this preset because I've done it so many times. You can ignore all my stupid labels that I name things. I literally just hit my keyboard when I save a file because I know I'm going to need it like right then and there. Um, but anyways, I only have a few things actually named accurately, like as you see, random numbers and gibberish, Jedi because it's for a Star Wars project, whatever. Um, anyways, wide screens are the ones that are presets. Um, you can make these in here, uh, but the cookie cutter just playing around with it. I can go into that in a short tutorial later if you guys really want to see it. But what you're going to want to do is once you have your set is you're going to bring it on the track. You can either drop it on the track or on the clip.
dropping it on the clip itself, we'll, we'll use whatever that effect is just for the clip dropping it on the track. We'll do it for every clip that is in that video track. So it doesn't matter for this project where we put it, but we'll just drop it on the clip. So there we go. Oh wow, it's all matched up. Awesome, right? Now what I do is, when you want to position Brandon Ruth is the next character, uh, the next point that you want to deal with. Oh, and by the way, before I go too, too far, let me go back to Video Fit Pan Crop and just show you the masking. I don't think this clip moves enough to, for it to really matter, but as, you, um, as he moves, you can move the mask to... Okay, so his head does move a little bit down here. So what we can do is... What I will do is... I'm going to copy this first point, because he doesn't move enough early on. And just hit paste, right? You can always move it. And then go back and then watch when his head begins to move. You can always do the whole click and zoom and then see when, uh, of course, delete this track because it just made one when I clicked. And you s scroll across. And it looks like his head does move a little bit down here. So with that being said, you can move this where you feel it needs to be. And all this is doing in between these two little sections is making sure that the mask isn't going to start moving too early before he starts moving. And again, this is just a quick, rough, you know, walkthrough of it. But see, as you see his head moving slightly, you can start clicking these points and fixing them as you need anywhere on this mask. And what that's going to do is gradually have this happen from whatever your last point is until this point is hit uh, on the video track. So from this point to this point, he will gradually do these changes that I'm doing to him right now. Um, so it's, it, it will not be that noticeable, um, but sometimes it can be depending on if you made his cheekbone like super big or something random on the next slide. Um, yeah, sorry about hopping back on that. I totally forgot to show you guys that. But once you're satisfied, it's the same thing, and it just shows the progress in between. So now that we have these lined up, you can pick where you want him. So if you're trying to mask multiple people into one shot, you can position him. Say the person he's, he's talking to is like right here, and it looks like he's too close. That's when you're going to click right here on this track. It's a, it's a track motion. So click there, and it brings this little box, and it's the same principle. A little click, the, click on the diamond, and you can position the footage where you want it to be. Now, what I usually do, no matter what, is I try to have a little over, a little overhang here, a little bitty lip there. That way, you don't render out your footage and end up and end up having a situation, a situation where, um, where the footage is slightly off and it's already too late, and you you already render out your final project, upload it online. You're like, oh my god, I'm I'm noticing it now. I see this little bitty thin black line underneath my guy, or something to that effect. And it's the same principle if you wanted to move as this footage is going, you can zoom in and out. But that's the basic thing right there. And just so you understand, I prefer that method. I think it's a lot more crisp than if you go to Video Event Pan Crop. This is another way you can move your position of your guy. Click Position, click the first diamond, make sure you're not on your mask settings. And you can just move it wherever you want. But I feel that, I'm doing undo, I feel that whenever you use that method, it's a lot... Um, choppier um, so we're gonna restore it back to the normal settings it feels a lot choppier on the movements it feels I don't know uh, it just doesn't look right when it comes down to it in comparison to when you're using this for the track motion so now one small little trick that I do to that I think just makes the footage look a little better is I will right click now that I've finished everything I want to do on that specific track and I will click duplicate track so once you click that you're going to go to your uh, Gaussian blur, blur, I can't even talk, this right here is where you're going to go onto your video effects. And you can click like a light blur and make sure you put on the second layer, not the first one. Drop it in there. And then you can just kind of play around with it, make it like, I don't know, we'll try that. And it gives a little fade around the edges, so you just so you can see the difference. Personally to me, I think sometimes this version can look good. Sometimes I think that this version makes it look too choppy, but overall the little fade around the sides kind of helps blend everything together. And if the fade seems too hard, even whenever you've lowered it, you can always click right here at the top where it says opacity, and you can just drag it down. And that'll just lower how visual that lower layer is, so, you know, about like 68, whatever. And then you're pretty much 
done. And I know what your first thing you're thinking is, but he's slightly over. Correct. So whenever you are ready to render this project out, you're going to highlight it, go to File, go to Render As. I save it to my desktop. We'll, we'll just call this whatever. We'll call this um, Superman. Wow. Fail caps lock is what we'll call it. Since I had caps lock on for some unknown reason. Okay, we'll render it out. You can pick whatever settings. There's so many different settings inside Sony Vegas. Again, that'd be a whole nother tutorial. So we'll just render this out. Here it goes. Rendering, rendering. Hopefully it doesn't take forever since I'm recording this. And of course, while you, you, you can play with this entire thing. You can color correct the background him. You can do it here. You can wait till you the full clip rendered and color correct it however you need to. Lots of different things. Um, I usually don't use the preview mode too much. Of course, I, I, I preview through footage a lot of times as I'm editing, but to get the best look of how it's going to look, at, unfortunately, rendering it out is the best method that I've found. Just taking the time to wait for this thing to slowly, slowly render for you. And then... Um, we don't need to open it because I'm about to just bring it straight in here, so we're just going to hit close. But you can open it up, that's what I usually do. Um, we'll go to import, media, which you can do it this way or you can just click and drag. Um, so there it is, Superman, Fail, Caps Lock, open. And here it is, made it in here. Now what I do is bring it down here, or you can delete all this other stuff. But I would suggest not doing that till after you've watched through your clip. And as you notice, it still has that same lip. So what I usually do is, because after I've made a ready to make a video, I have like 50 clips that look very similar with the little over lip or the positioning. Or sometimes if it was a full screen footage, you have an entire body down here when it's going to become widescreen. And all you got to do is go back to the cookie cutter and your preset setting, drop it on there, and now he is cropped back with it. And then like I said, you can always go to any tools you want, like film look one and just drop the color on there make it you know however you think it, it looks best for your scene um, just play around with the tools and that's pretty much it for this simple basic masking if you guys would like to see more um, different masks or different things in the future just let me know I would have no problem at all um, making more videos I hope you guys like this video if it's your first time on my channel subscribe and I would love to make more videos like this, guys. I hope this helps you guys. I want to see you guys perform as awesome video editors. I know you're new editors out there. Um, even maybe you're not a new editor, but you've never really messed with masking too much. It's not very hard. It's just very time-consuming because this was just such a basic clip where he's not moving too much. But I wish everybody the best. And let me know if you have any questions. If I didn't cover something maybe too quickly just from my own habit, just let me know, and I will gladly comment and talk to you below. And help figure out whatever your issue is with masking. But believe me guys, you guys can be the next editor. I'm excited to see what you guys do. And uh, yeah, keep being awesome and thanks for watching my first tutorial on my channel. I'm trying to branch out guys and do different content for you guys. I'm trying to reach reach new grounds with this channel. That, you know, That's my new goal here. Um, so this could be a, a weekly or bi-weekly thing if you guys like it. Please let me know and thanks for being awesome. Hopefully I didn't take up too much of your time.